Hi everyone. In my last video, renamed Jesus would be called unloving and divisive, I gave several examples of how Jesus wouldn't fit into today's churches because of his message. I would like to have a closer look at one of those examples, and that is John 6. Jesus knew they were following him because they had eaten the bread that he had multiplied. In verse 27 we read, do not work for the food which perishes, but for the food which endures to eternal life, which the Son of Man will give to you, for on him the Father, God, has set a seal. Now, the whole conversation that develops from here on is one where he and a huge part of the crowd talk past each other. Jesus talks about spiritual things, people about earthly things. Next thing they ask is, what shall we do so that we may work the works of God? They want to do something. Indeed, Jesus had told them to work for the food which endures, but now he clarifies what he means by that. This is the work of God, that you believe in him whom he has sent. So, the only work that is required of us to be saved is to believe in the Son of God. Now, in their reaction, we see that they have absolutely not understood what Jesus is talking about. They ask, What then do you do for a sign, so that we may see and believe you? What work do you perform? They get the definitions wrong. Seeing is not believing, but seeing. According to Hebrews 11.1, 1, Faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. They have no idea what believing is. Now they go back to what they know, the manna. Our fathers ate the manna in the wilderness, as it is written. He gave them bread out of heaven to eat. Again, they assume that he must be talking about tangible things, real bread, and that that is the bread of heaven he is talking about. Now Jesus says, Truly, truly, I say to you, it is not Moses who has given you the bread out of heaven, but it is my Father who gives you the true bread out of heaven. For the bread of God is that which comes down out of heaven and gives life to the world. Jesus explains this is new. It is not about Moses, the commandments, and literal bread. It is about himself, having come down from heaven and being able to give life to the world. They still think it is about literal bread and say, Lord, always give us this bread. They love the miracle, they, they want that bread continually. Now Jesus finally tells them what he is referring to. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. He who comes to me will not hunger, and he who believes in me will never thirst. But I said to you that you have seen me, and yet do not believe. All that the Father gives me will come to me, and the one who comes to me I will certainly not cast out. For I have come down from heaven, not to do my own will, but the will of him who sent me. This is the will of him who sent me, that of all that he has given me I lose nothing but raise it up on the last day. For this is the will of my Father, that everyone who beholds the Son and believes in him will have eternal life, and I myself will raise him up on the last day. He is the bread of life. It is about life, eternal life, and resurrection. He also tells them that they do not profit by simply seeing him in the flesh, Although they are in his physical presence, they do not believe. They must not only see, but believe. Now it continues. Therefore the Jews were grumbling about him, because he said, I am the bread that came down from heaven. They were saying, Is not this Jesus, the son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know? How does he now say, I have come down out of heaven? Jesus answered and said to them, Do not grumble among yourselves. 
no one can come to me unless the Father who sent me draws him, and I will raise him up on the last day. It is written in the prophets, and they shall all be taught of God. Everyone who has heard and learned from the Father comes to me. Not that anyone has seen the Father, except the one who is from God. He has seen the Father. Truly, truly, I say to you, he who believes has eternal life. I am the bread of life. Your fathers ate the manna in the wilderness, and they died. This is the bread which comes down out of heaven, so that one may eat of it and not die. I am the living bread that came down out of heaven. If anyone eats of this bread, he will live forever. And the bread also, which I will give for the life of the world, is my flesh. Now, in today's seeker-friendly churches, the goal they have is, how can we make them all come, and how can we make them stay? They have developed sophisticated marketing concepts around this to make people feel comfortable, tell them what they want to hear, and leave out all that might, quote-unquote, offend them, both in the decoration and worship style, as in the message itself. They literally leave out words like sin, death, cross, salvation, etc. Jesus does the very opposite. He does not seem to be interested in numbers, so-called church growth. Instead of saying, everybody can come, he says something here that sounds more like putting people off. No one can come to me unless the Father who sent me draws him. It is not about getting as many as possible to follow him around, but about those who believe and understand spiritual matters. Speaking of following around, this is the difference between a carnal believer or not believer and the one who understands what it means, Christ in you, the hope of glory. I have started a series in my German Miwi group about the fact that we do not get our doctrine from the Synoptic Gospels. I am getting reactions like, but he is our example whom we should follow and imitate and we should do good works just as he did. Following Jesus has become very much in vogue today, again. Instead of labeling themselves a Christian, people call themselves followers of Christ. Books like Not a Fan but a Follower promote this idea. What it really is, is nothing but zealous commandment keeping. Commandment -keeping. Because Christ's earthly ministry was under the law, of course. But is this what we are, followers of Christ? The disciples were, literally. They picked up their cross, almost all of them died as martyrs, literally, left everything they had and owned and followed Jesus. This is not what we have as the church. We have Christ indwelling us by the Spirit. Now Jesus goes on to say that the only way to have life and to live forever is to eat his flesh and drink his blood. Otherwise, one doesn't have life in oneself. That means anything one does outwardly, keep the commandments, follow Jesus, does not generate life. Now, up to that point, this was the only thing that was known. What Jesus is saying here is prophetic. He is pointing to a time when he would be one with a believer and the creator of a new life in them. The text goes on to say, Therefore many of his disciples, when they heard this, said, This is a difficult statement. Who can listen to it? This sounds to me like having been put in nice, polite words here. I can imagine that what quite a few of them said was something like, This guy is nuts. He isn't making sense. Let's get out of here. Then it says, But Jesus conscious that his disciples grumbled at this, said to them, Does this cause you to stumble? David Benjamin made a community post a couple of days ago about stumbling blocks. He was talking about stumbling blocks or offenses placed in the way by those who purposely want to stumble the believers. They are the ones who are to be marked and avoided. 
He explained that the word used for stumbling block or offense is scandalon, G4625 in the Strong's. It is the same word origin here, G4624, scandalizo, cause to stumble. Now, what is interesting is that not only are there those who cause others to stumble in a negative way by putting stumbling blocks in front of them, but there are also those who take offense or stumble over Jesus' words. In the next sentence, we clearly see why that is. Jesus says, What then if you see the Son of Man ascending to where he was before? It is the Spirit who gives life, the flesh profits nothing. The words that I have spoken to you are spirit and are life. Those who stumbled over Jesus' message were carnal. And the definition of that is not sinning much, as an example of which the Christians at Corinth are often named. What this means is simply look at and deal with spiritual matters with one's own natural understanding. In this case, it meant to only deal with Jesus as a natural man, the Messiah maybe, but a man, and take everything he said literally, literal bread, literal flesh, and so on. Shortly before, they had just attempted to take him by force and make him king. They could only think in terms of the kingdom. Therefore, Jesus says, what if they saw him ascend to heaven? Because then, all their earthly hopes of having their king and kingdom would have come to an end. But instead, Jesus later explains to the close circle of disciples that it is good for him to go to the Father because then the Holy Spirit would be coming, which would be far better a far better reality than actually following him, following him around in person. So, those who get offended by his message and stumble are those who are carnal. They are disciples, have followed him, seen his miracles, and have even eaten of the bread. But they do not understand spiritual matters. They are carnal. What is the difference between those that are carnal, why do they get offended, and those that are spiritual and understand Jesus' message? The carnal ones only perceive with their senses. They want to see instead of believe, respectively, they redefine believing by saying it is seeing. They want to see works, eat real bread, have a real king, and an earthly kingdom. In contrast, Jesus speaks of eating his flesh and drinking his blood. This is a way of prophetically explaining the new reality to come after his death, resurrection, and ascension. The believer will then be indwelled by the Holy Spirit. What you eat gets digested and assimilated into your body. It is not something external anymore. You are one with Christ and it is him living through you. In contrast, the carnal person perceives Christ as external, only hears external commands and wants to see external results. Therefore, Jesus says that it is not Moses who gives the bread from heaven, it is not the law, but it is he himself given by the Father as life to the world. Although the carnal people mingle with a the crowd, they will never understand spiritual matters. They have the same Jesus in front of them and hear the same words being spoken, but for them, they take on a different, merely natural meaning. For them, everything happens externally and must be measured with their natural eyes. As long as the words sound more or less familiar to them, they still go along. But when Jesus gets specific and says things that can only be understood spiritually, they get offended. They cannot understand oneness with him and they want tangible results and want to follow an external Jesus. Now Jesus says again, For this reason I have said to you that no one can come to me unless it has been granted him from the Father. Then it says, As a result of this, many of his disciples withdrew and were not walking with him anymore. 
So Jesus said to the twelve, You do not want to go away also, do you? Instead of saying, Everybody welcome, and trying to figure out how large crowds can be attracted, like it's being done by modern-day seeker-friendly churches who follow secular marketing concepts, in the case of Rick Warren, who says that his mentor for the church growth concept was Peter Drucker, he wasn't a believer, or who have as their basis esoteric New Age teachings, like Bill Hybels, who was trained by Robert Schuller, which he wouldn't admit, but it got out nonetheless. Jesus does the very opposite. He is not concerned because of those who have left. He knows that whoever the Father draws will come to him. Many are so concerned not to offend people so as to keep what they call unity and keep the masses together. They would have probably told Jesus, can't you just keep it simple? Stick with your miracles, the real bread everybody knows how to eat? Do you have to say such scary stuff nobody really understands? After all, you want the message to go out, right? And the disciples to multiply, right? Well, regarding growth, Colossians 2 tells us we should hold fast to the head and that that would generate growth, which is from God. In the previous verse, by the way, we are being warned not to let anyone defraud us of our prize among which are those who delight in false humility. So watch out, there is true humility and a counterfeit. Instead of telling the masses who left, wait, stay, I'll explain what I really meant. It's really secondary, let's agree on the basics. Great to have you with us, actually. Jesus says to his close disciples, you do not want to go away also, do you? Now, with their natural mind, they could not have understood Jesus' message either. But through the Holy Spirit, Peter, speaking for all of them, knew that Jesus' words were words of eternal life. Unlike the others, he didn't only want to see, he actually believed. The same word, cause to stumble, we find again in John 16. Jesus speaks to the close circle of disciples about persecution. It'll happen through them that do not know the Father, although they have heard his message. In verse 1 it says, These things I have spoken to you, so that you may be kept from stumbling. We should not be surprised if persecution happens, which can take on various forms, and not get offended. It happens through those about whom Jesus says, If I had not come and spoken to them, they would ha not have sin, but now they have no excuse for their sin. So, Jesus isn't concerned with the quantity of followers. He knows those who actually believe, and of them he will lose none. To those who are carnally minded, spiritual truths won't make sense. Just like Peter says about Paul's letters, in which are some things hard to understand, which the untaught and unstable distort, as they do also the rest of the scriptures, to their own destruction. The untaught, the word meaning of which can also be unlearned, ignorant, will stumble over Jesus' message at the point where it talks about true spiritual life. Interestingly, they who are called ignorant hold it against those who teach this message of Jesus being the life in us, in every area, that they know too much and are prideful. But, as I said, watch out, there is such a thing as fake humility. And zeal without knowledge doesn't lead anywhere nor help anybody. Well, I hope this has helped you. Have a blessed day.